So today I want to give you some tips and tricks for mirrored make one increases. Now most knitters don't have too many problems learning how to do the make one increase, but when it comes time to doing mirrored make one increases, that's when they start running into trouble. One of the reasons is they're not sure at a particular point whether they're supposed to be working a make one left or make one right. Once they begin working the increase, they have to make a choice between um, lifting the running thread from the front or the back or knitting the running thread from the front or the back. These two choices are opposite of each other and they're very easy to confuse because neither one of them indicates whether the result is going to end up with a left leaning increase or right leaning increase. So to start off with, I want to give you some tips that will throw away that whole idea of uh, front and back when we're, you're working the increases. Instead has you focusing on left and right from start to end. Then at the end I'll come back and we'll talk about how you can remember whether you're supposed to be doing a make one left first and then doing then do a make one right later or if you're supposed to do the opposite. So let's go look at the demonstration and then we'll come back and talk about that. Okay, so if you're going to do a make one left increase, you're going to use your left needle to lift the running thread. Now we're always lifting the running thread from the front, but for a make one left, you're going to use your left needle. So you lift it from the front. Now look at how that strand is lying on the needle. You see how it's angled to the left? That reinforces that we have lifted the strand correctly. If we want to do a make one right, we use the right needle to lift that running thread again from the front. And when you look at how it's, the strand is sitting on the needle, you can see that it is angled to the right. Now make one right increases are always a little fussier to uh, complete than make one left and this is no exception. You can't knit off of the right hand needle, you have to knit off the left hand needle. So we're going to have to transfer that back, we're going to have to transfer the strand to the left hand needle maintaining the stitch mount. So we, wa we want it to stay to the right so that the two needles are pointing toward each other as we're transferring the strand. And you can see that it is still angled to the right. What you don't want to do is, is just use your left needle and come through like that because that will change the stitch mount. So you've got it on the needle, it's, it's to the right, and you have the two needles pointing toward each other when you, trans, when you transfer. So we know at this point we've got the, the strand on the needle in the correct orientation. For a make one left, it's, it's leaning left. For a make one right, it's leaning right. Now the next step is that we are going to knit this lifted strand. So for a make one left, we lift from the front with the left needle. Now the working yarn has to point left if we're working a make one left. So if you look at how this needle is, is um, lying in parallel to this strand here, they're both pointing to the left, and the strand is, is to the left of the needle. The strand is on the left of the working needle. The only way to knit this stitch with the needle pointing to the left is to come in here and knit it that way. If you came in through the front, then you're positioned to purl, so that's not going to work. If you are swinging around this way, then the strand is on the right, not the left, and you, you're not going to get your twisted increase. So it's pointing left, and you come through the strand that way, so it's still, still pointing left. For a make one right, you lift with the right needle, and you're putting it on the left needle, so it's st still lying to the lying, so the angle to the right. And the working needle has to point to the right while you're knitting this. So you're going to swing this around this way. Now look at how the strand on the needle is to the right of your working needle. The only way to knit it from this position is to come through here. And that is tends to feel awkward, but you can see it's pointing to the right. Um, it's very easy to enter this way, but 
first of all, the strand is on the left, and when you stick your needle through, it's it's very wide open. It's not um, going to be twisted at all. The reason it's hard to knit this way is because you're twisting that stitch when you do it. So if you, you wrap your yarn around the needle and you pull it through, you can see that, that the strand under the needle, the new increase, is angled to the right. Where with the left, you lift it, it's angled left, the needle points left, you insert, you wrap it around, and you can see as it comes off the needle, it is angled to the left. So with the mirrored increases, often your pattern will specify whether you're supposed to be uh, working a make one right and then make doing a make one left or opposite. Um, and it, but other times you might have the choice, you might just realize, well, I should be working mirrored increases. It doesn't tell me to do that, but I know I should, but I don't know whether I should be doing um, the make one right first or the make one right second. There is a standard method of leaning increases and decreases. Now, you don't have to follow that standard, and often there are good reasons not to, but the standard is to have the increase or decrease lean toward the area that's changing in size. So for example, if you are doing an increase at the beginning of a row and the end of the row, that means the center of the fabric is what's getting larger. So your default could be, mine is, but, and you could choose this as well, is to have the increases leaning in toward the center of the fabric. But you're not always doing mirrored increases at the far ends of the fabric. Sometimes you're doing them somewhere in the middle of the fabric. Typically there are markers that flag to you where you are doing your increase. And so you may work up to the marker and do the increase before the marker, then slip the marker. Or you may work up to the marker, slip it, and then work the increase. So the side of the marker where you're working the increase is telling you which direction or which part of the fabric is getting larger. So if your marker is, uh, is right here, and you are knitting across the row, and you're supposed to do the increase before you get to the marker, that means everything over here is what's getting larger. So you could lean your increase toward that area. Other times you have two markers where you, you, you work across to the first marker, you slip it, you do the increase right after that marker, and then you knit up to this second marker, and you do the increase before you slip that marker. So you're doing all of the increases between these two markers. In that case, it's the area between the markers that's getting larger, and so you would lean your increases toward that. Now, this is just a, a recommendation. You might prefer um, to actually lean your increases in the opposite direction. There's no reason why you can't, but the point is to make a decision or make an observation if the designer has indicated in the pattern which way to do that, and simply note, oh, the increases are leaning toward the area changing in size or the increases are leaning away from the area changing in size. That way, when you get across, um, when you are working your way across the row and you get to the point where you have to make an increase, you won't have to go look it up in your pattern and see, okay, which one do I have to do and make one right or make one left. You'll understand it based on how the fabric is changing while you're knitting it. So I hope you have found these tips to be useful and that you are no longer confused by mirrored make one increases. Thanks for watching.